Um, I'm Professor Chuck Stewart. I'm head of the computer science department, and I'm here to moderate the session on how does that compute. We are um, very happy to have four current students who will be with us to answer your questions. They are, represent a variety of computing related majors, and we're simply going to start by having them tell us about themselves in order answering some of these questions, but more broadly, um, just giving a sense of who they are and what, what they're working on and what they're interested in. So after they make their introductions, we will uh, open the floor for questions. And um, you can type the questions into the chat box. We have a representative from the admissions office, Meg Whalen, who is answering questions right now in the chat box. Um, and we will then take, after the students introduce themselves, we will take questions. The, the questions will mostly be answered by the students. Uh, some of those questions, we'll get each of them to answer. Some of them may be very specific to their majors. So let's get started. You, so okay. go ahead, Caitlin. Hello, I'm Caitlin. Uh, I am class of 2022, so I'm currently doing my ARCH semester during the summer. I am an eArts and communication media and design dual major. And I'm also the vice president of the art club. And you can see the little owl on my screen, which is also this little pin. Um, that's something I designed in one of my classes. So I thought it would be fun to include that. I've had a lot of fun at RPI and my dream school. OK, thank you. Next, we have Casey Honecker. Hi, um, as you know, my name is Charlotte. I am an incoming sophomore, so I've really only been at RPI for half a year, unfortunately. Um, I'm an ITWS you, major with, I'm Next working toward a CS Stanton. dual, um, and I'm also the vice president of the ITWS leadership board, which means I'm part of the board that is kind of the student liaison to the um, department heads of ITWS which is information technology and web science, for those of you who don't know. Um, we work on some pretty interesting things and set up events that help the student body, um, such as we're working on a speaker series now where we will have um, various people, various alums who are in different areas of IT or business who will come talk to the students. Um, this summer, I'm an intern for an artificial intelligence sales technology company. Um, I've worked for them before in product and marketing. Um, so I'd say overall, I did know that I was interested in ITWS, but the past year has definitely been a big learning experience and I'm excited to continue. Okay, we also have Kristen uh, Bertrand. Uh, Kristen, I think you, um, I saw your name there. Chris, Kristen had, was late for a, a last minute event. Kristen, if you click on broadcast, you should be able to join us. So she was having a little trouble joining us, but Kristen, if you can hear me, please click on broadcast and you should, on the upper right of the screen and you should be able to join us from there. There we go. Okay, so the last is Kristen Bertrand. We're waiting for her to be, there you are. Okay, yeah, you're on, you're with us. So go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll start answering questions, okay? Okay. 
can you explain what C what a mentor is? I'm going to start with the questions myself. Can you please explain CS1, a mentor, and our course? Please introduce both of those. Okay, thank you. So we've uh, you've met now the four students. So now um, we um, open the uh, open the floor of the chat box for questions. There have been a number of uh, procedural questions, uh, and so let me move on to the while people are starting to come up with the questions. Let me put Casey on the spot here. There was a question: What does ECSE stand for? And Meg has answered it but maybe you can tell people about the difference between the dual majors or the computer systems engineering and computer science majors. Okay. Uh, while we're waiting for more questions, um, since Caitlin is a dual major, can you explain dual majors um, yep. at Rensselaer? So my major is electronic arts and communication media and design, which are two degrees that are kind of parallel to each other. Uh, so rather than doing a double major, which would get me two diplomas, I get one degree with one diploma and it's both of them kind of combined a little bit because there's a lot of overlap between the required classes for each major. Um, so since I'm in the host department and I do electronic arts, uh, I've also taken a lot of communications yeah, courses so and so it makes a lot of sense to For an ITWS student, it's actually pretty easy to dual major um, between uh, Char, either ITWS you're a dual major on computer a, science in computer or science and ITWS. And business you want to explain that from your perspective as uh, well. I don't know please. if there are any others, but it's really easy because a lot of the coursework overlaps, and at RPI, you can count, I believe, the majority of courses um, for both. So while you're taking ITWS classes, you wind up taking a lot of computer science classes. And then if you just shift around your schedule a little bit, you'll wind up with a dual degree. So that's kind of the route that I decided to go in. Okay, Kristen, you want to answer from your perspective as Hello, well, please? Hello, I'm Casey. Um, I'm from Sacramento, California. I'm a junior with a dual CS and ECSE major. I'm also doing the Arch. Um, on campus, I'm the technical director of the RPI Playhouse, which is a theater. I'm also a volunteer at the RPI Forge, which is our makerspace on campus. Um, I did not and still do not know what I'm going to be end up doing in CS. Um, CS is a vast field and I'm still learning about all the different sectors. However, my current interest is in low-level computing with like 8-bit microcontrollers. Great. Thank you. And since Caitlin um, had I'm a nice little thing to share, really I'll quick. also bring uh, one up. The question I'm is, are currently working the on this current project is on that slide as well. The answer um, is no. About which two is something I'm doing for the theater on campus. Who major in computer science That's are it. only in computer science, and about one third of them dual major with other departments. Okay. Uh, there's a question: What activities and projects are done in the makerspace? I think. Who is the makerspace person? Okay, go ahead, Kate, please.
Can everyone see me now? You see me now, everybody? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Kristen Bertrand. I'm a rising junior computer science and cognitive science student. Great, thank you. Um, I'm a okay, CS1 so mentor a and what I'm also an ARCOS member. And I apologize for being late, are everybody. They project or lecture based. And I'm going to let everybody who's taken a CS class answer that question from their own perspective. So I want to start with you, Kristen. Yep. Yes. So CS1 is our introductory class for the computer science major. Um, a mentor for that class is like a step below a TA. So we have TAs that are grad students that deal with administering labs and they do grading. Mentors will assist during these labs. So they would grade different checkpoints for the students. They also can hold office hours generally with a TA, but not always. Um, Arcos is RPI's open source group it's a class that you take but it functions yeah, more like so, a club um, it's you work on producing open source content you would typically so join a project and then throughout the semester so you would continue but, um, to build up a website or an IT app and meet goals and then you do get graded on it but it's mostly based, for participation not for so actual you have the programming aspect but um, i guess completion of the project aspect, communication aspect um and a kind of different yeah. preparation style in itws for whatever your future career might be. Um, a lot of our classes actually are kind of project-based, um, the ITWS specific classes, that is. So that means working on big projects with groups, um, working on presenting those projects, you're graded on presentation, um, and a lot more kind of hands-on stuff just because of the nature of what you're studying. Um, so that's kind of how IT might differ, an IT class might differ from a computer science class. Great, thank you, Casey or Caitlin. I don't have a lot of the stuff for the computer science, computer science classes. classes so. Okay, the next, we've got two questions here about programming languages taught in the computer science courses. And in particular, there's a question about C, which I think for the summer arts, the students taking operating systems this summer is a very relevant question. So whoever needs to start with that. I mean, just for, go ahead. Someone Definitely. Else. Thank you. Kate. Um, so Casey. someone else. ECSE is kind of a combination of EE and CS. Um, so ECSE, you take a lot of the introductory C EE courses like circuits. And then even um, just in my you also first take semester, a lot of CS classes. IT class, um, but what the focus is more on microprocessors, and microchips, like and more uh, low-level devices, languages. and like actually so like building computer parts JavaScript, and not your, uh, um, EE PHP, or the CS side. So it's kind of a combination um, of both. The things that are kind of associated with web development, and that was in one semester, um, and it didn't really feel like it was overwhelming or anything. So I'd say there's. I mean, you're going to learn a lot of languages. That's essentially what's going to happen. Sure. So I'm a dual major within the computer science department and the cognitive science department in Hass. I think it's really interesting. Uh, like um, so Caitlin one, already said, you don't get two a, degrees, you get one degree. Um, and what's actually nice so for cognitive CS1 science is, is you have to take a lot of the same base computer Python. science classes. Um, I think you go up to ALGO with, with cognitive science. So I don't have to take um, those classes twice. They both the, count for the, the same major or for two different majors, but for the same degree, which is nice. And when you do our principles of programming, principles of software course, that is taught in Java. And then a lot of, as Charlotte says, the web science courses and the students doing Arcos projects, 
do a lot of PHP, um, a whole lot of JavaScript. So you learn a very wide range of languages. Uh, there's a question about TAs versus professors teaching the courses. So go ahead, students, and answer that from your perspective. No. Okay. Um, yeah, the the labs are taught by TAs and under under with assistance from undergraduates, undergraduate programming mentors, and Kristen is one of ours. Um, sorry, I made the mistake of not turning off. I mean, I'm only a sophomore, but um, my friend. Okay, goes to so Columbia there's a question. I, you know, sat in two on questions. One of her Zoom computer science once, program more um, practical we or were both theoretical? Taking data structures, and from that, that little. One tiny bit of experience. I'd say that RPI I think it really depends on the practical. class. There are some that are um, going to be more project based and some that will be more lecture based. It, but there's a lot more in the beginning, the, in the more homework. introductory classes, you'll generally have lecture twice a week and you'll be learning new concepts there. You'll have labs once a week. So these will usually consist of three checkpoints that are smaller parts of a bigger project almost, but they're not huge things and then you'll usually have a homework assignment every week or two which is more like a project where you have something you're going to build up to over the course of a few days I can get but that. i wouldn't say um so any classes have, that i've encountered uh, anyway are more 3d printers project based or um, more lecture based it's normally PLA, a mixture of both but some will change like the, fiber, um, the percentage fiberglass. what can i this is uh, we have a laser lectures. cutter um, uh, we also have vinyl cutter we have an electronics workstation so we have a question what can i do to reflow solder so like pcb design um there's quite a few things in there and we also um, work closely with the Broad mill questions. which is a manufacturing center on campus so we can get everything from water jets to sandblasters so we you can if you have a project you can probably work on it in the forge in the makerspace yeah i feel like there isn't the necessity to have experience i know it can like seem a little intimidating um it's particularly intimidating, like for IT kids. On one of the first days, the professor asked us what we wanted to get out of the course, and people responded with, "What is IT?" Which is a bit daunting. But um, I don't. My my roommate came into the CS program with literally no experience and is programming at the same level I am. So. That's great. Um, so this this the related question is what is the level of coding proficiency expected of applicants? And I think we've just heard that the answer is zero. It helps, but students catch up really, really quickly. Um, and um, we've actually taken the data in CS1 and backed this up. Uh, OK. So. Which program would best allow me to focus on data science? I mean, I know and that there is a analysis. You, you have concentrations in the IT program, and I know there is a data concentration. That's just not mm. something that I. Can anybody want to try that, or do you want me to handle happen? that? Uh, Charlotte, you may be on mute. Kristen, did you want to answer that? Did you have a thought on that too? Yeah, I think, I mean, you get a general basis in most of the common programming okay. languages, so they're, languages they're and it really depends on what upper level classes you take, you can, but everyone for um, CS major will learn cross, uh, Python, C++, C, a bit of MIPS assembly language, Java, uh, um, and, and you I think that's about it for the intro courses. Kyle lab based, also projects, homeworks. It engineering side of things, so like the computer systems and the electrical and engineering side of things, um, a lot more lab-based, but also much, a lot more projects and stuff like that than there are in CS. Data analytics um, where you learn about. But it also the, kind of depends on what class you're taking. Some are the, very really project-based in CS, cycle, others are and that is taught by the lectures. director of the ITWS program. So it's there's work on data analysis and um, machine learning uh, all over. Campus. I, I don't. I I'm going to answer yeah, this question a little indirectly. 
and in a way that are there interdisciplinary like majors within but CS? But if that is something that yeah, I'm really an optimist. And we're yes, only yes, using yes, C yes, for programming um, and doing post standards to like low level C because that's um, essentially. Why I think the other CS majors can talk. We program pretty much every language from Java to Python to C plus plus to R even. So there's quite a bit. Good answer. Uh, in addition, you can dual major with computer science and management, um, or you can dual major with computer ITWS and management. Um, there's lots of opportunities. Both programs have a lot of flexibility. Um, you want to I think it's mostly professors who teach the courses. I think for recitations, which is sort of like a review session, you might get more TAs teaching, but I don't think I've had any classes where there were TAs lecturing. Um, so that answered the, uh, somebody else want to answer, when do you have to declare a dual major? And I think Casey just said by the end of the sophomore year, um, you can really do it any time from the beginning of your second semester freshman year on. So the advantage of doing it early is to make sure you can get into courses as a, that are restricted to majors. That's the reason to do it early. Otherwise, you can continue to take courses and then make a decision. Uh, there's a request to talk about the makerspace. No clue. Excellent. Um, here's uh, the difference between a dual major and a double degree. So. OK, I'll talk about that one. Yeah, I can Go talk ahead, about that. Uh, so again, a double right. major is you doing two degrees alongside each other. Honestly, um, if you just w start working on personal projects, if you have some experience, that would be good. Uh, which means you but if you don't have any experience, there's lots of websites dual major, online where you, you can usually have start to learn the basics of a language. Classes but if you don't have any experience, you can start at CS1. And, and honestly, they're not expecting online. you to know anything coming in. And I think it's a good class to kind of get you up to speed with people who might have coded before uh, coming to college. And that's what I'm doing right now is a dual major. So there's a lot of overlap between the two majors that I choose. And all four of our, all four of our panelists are dual majors. Um, uh, on an administrative side, just to answer the, the more, and I'll switch back if they want to add more. Um, if you're going to take, get a du dual, and double to degree, add on to that, I have a, a couple of friends of mine are a CS credits. math major, and Beyond they focus a lot more, like, depending on what upper level credits, classes you can take, you can focus a lot more on the theoretical side of computing. So I know there's both options. That are um, Casey has to take a few more as an ECSC computer science dual major. But if you want a dual degree, double degree, it should be dual major or double degree here. It's a little, It's a little confusing. But anyway... Dual major means you satisfy both requirements of both majors within your single bachelor's of science degree. And all four of our panelists are doing that. Double degree means you get two bachelor's degrees. Usually what we recommend is if you have enough advanced placement credit at, or are accelerating your program, rather than getting a double degree, we recommend getting a dual major and then spending those extra credits to get a master's degree. So within that same number of credits, you can also earn a master's degree. So there's a um, what we call the co-terminal master's, which is basically means within four or maybe five years, you get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and you fulfill about 160 total course credits. Okay, let's see what we have as additional questions. I have a pretty good example for this one. Um, it depends, what are well, it depends the average on the class, sizes of the off, class? So do you, the students, a huge feel like your professors like are easily accessible? No, you're not really going to be like regularly going to your you professor, to but that mostly because very important question. you have TAs, you have peers. I mean, you could email your professor, but like 
Um, but then for smaller classes, like um, my IT classes or something, I'm pretty close with my professor. So close, in fact, that during um, a project that we were doing, I had a problem with a database I was setting up and it was Christmas break. And I spent the entire day texting him and he walked me through how to set up this database for this project. So professors in smaller classes are definitely accessible. I think the classes do tend to get smaller as you go up in difficulty. So the intro classes, like Charlotte said, they're probably gonna be Excellent. pretty big. You won't yeah. necessarily know the professor one-on-one -on -one just because of the number of students. And that's why you do have the TAs and the mentors to help out. But as you get to more upper level classes, they tend to get at least a bit smaller. Um, I've never had an issue, depending, even if the class size is huge, with contacting my professors if there was an issue. They're usually pretty responsive, but you don't need to necessarily contact them for every single issue you're having. You have other people you can reach out to. Great. Uh, Casey and Caitlin, you want to try that one too? Okay. Yeah, so it's definitely going to differ, <laughs> differ depending on which classes and department you're in. Uh, most of my you know, Haas communications and arts classes have been around the 20 person range. Um, and then some of my larger classes are usually in, in science. So my geology class, my math classes, those were all much larger. Uh, but not, not on a scale of like, oh my gosh, I'm drowning in a sea of people, you know. It was very, you know, manageable, I think. Um, there was always plenty of time to talk with my professors. To add Great, to that, thank you. Okay, um, the next couple of questions are about internships. It's very easy at RPI. Are there many opportunities it took me about two hours of filling out a form. Or and ITWS I'd say there definitely are. I live 30 it. minutes away so from RPI, think, so that's kind of where I have to look for internships. To, I and I've definitely year, found a lot of opportunities within the area. We have a career fair normally in the fall and in the spring where we bring in a bunch of employers and you can give them your resumes, chat with them. And I would say a lot of those are fairly local to RPI, but even not near RPI, there's a lot of internship um, opportunities. I think what benefits the students finding internships most at RPI is just the general culture of it. Um, even as a freshman, the majority of your peers are looking for internships or looking for opportunities to work on projects. Mm -hmm. And when you're in an environment where everybody's, you know, kind of driven toward that mm -hmm. same goal, you're going to have people helping you find internships, especially during Corona. Um, when everybody, you know, was losing their internships. I sent a link in the um, chat the to our website. I, um, um, to keep mine. Pretty much, um, we're a help space the general to student body help people do projects. We have everything from a lot of really 3D printers um, to um, outreach for internships, laser cutters to engravers um, to all. So, so we have a lot of equipment. Culturally, um, um, there's and a big push can be a go-to for really projects beneficial. on campus. Others? Okay, uh, just some statistics. And well, uh, in general, our students get internships pretty much everywhere throughout the country. Uh, lots in New York City, lots in uh, the Bay Area, lots in Seattle, and really spread throughout the country. But there are an increasing number of opportunities locally. Um, do we have a concentration in robotics? Uh, any opportunities for you have for students who are interested in robotics? Okay. 
Anybody else with robotics experience? Okay. Uh, do CS students get the opportunity to use the supercomputer? Have any? Great. Yeah, so the, the Amos supercomputer, and there's a second one on coming online this week. Um, these are both for um, massively parallel and also uh, machine learning type applications. Students get to use them in the, we have a course that over 100 students a semester take called Parallel Computing, taught by the director of the center. Um, and all the students are on that supercomputer there. But if you get involved in a research project, um, that uses is the supercomputer, it's very easy to get on. I have five students right now using Amos. So, um, uh, let's see, there's questions about programming languages being taught. Um, let me sort of reiterate, that's the, the range in the formal CS1 intro courses are C, C++, well, starting with Python, then C++, and C and Java, and most students learn JavaScript, PHP, CSS along the way. Um, um, I mean, for uh, let's see. IC students, which is what obviously a little different than CS students. Do RPI um, students, compu computer science students usually pursue after graduation? Joining the workforce. Anyone with some so insight on that So you have a lot one? of people in you know, your project management, uh, product development, solutions architecture, which is like, the person who oversees the development going on on a product. So for people in IT, there might be like a lot more business heavy. Um, there are also people who go in completely different directions, like the entrepreneurial direction, who take their technical background and, you know, build something with it. Um, so there's a pretty wide variety. Um, some of the companies that IT students go into might be AWS, Alibaba, Microsoft, Google. Um, those are like the big names. Obviously, not everybody chooses to go that route, um, but that's kind of the range that we have. Others? Um, yeah, so the statistics are about 90% go into the workforce, and you heard the wide range of opportunities from um, management and project direction. I like, can answer that. Uh, um, um, like Charlotte was talking Kristen to all said, the way the to security. Initial classes will be pretty big. Um, so there's a, a wide lot of people. But that being said, even in data structures, I've walked up to Professor to Cutler and just said hi and talked, uh, and they're always and very like welcoming, very open, even when there's 50 people in a line Let behind you because it's kind of a bigger class. Um, so professors have always been, at least like for me, very open and very nice. Do you feel like the work you do in class you for working in a job in your field? So maybe our internship experiences, people can help with that. Um, yeah, and I've worked in uh, product development, not this year, this year I'm working in marketing. Um, but the year before I worked in product development and then when I uh, got to RPI, there was a lot of parallel where actually, well, my job helped my education a little bit more because I did it before I was a freshman, but um, there's definitely a practical use to what you're learning, uh, especially in classes where you do projects and hands-on things that kind of mimic the business world. Um, yeah. Just to give an alternate perspective, I was, unfortunately was canceled, but I was meant to do an internship with the government this summer for cybersecurity. I have no background in cybersecurity, but they chose me because the RPI curriculum really gets you to be comfortable with teaching yourself things, and they were confident that I could learn on the job. So even if you haven't necessarily encountered the subject you're going to be working on, I think the classes encourage you to learn how to learn quickly and how to pick up subjects fast.
Um, I want to jump in here to, to, and ask, does any of our panelists have experience with the RPI security group? Okay, so let me just um, type in here an abbreviation. It's called RPI SEC, which is the RPI Security Club. It's entirely student run. Um, there's a couple of faculty, including myself, who advise them, but they have courses, they participate in national and international competitions, and they win. Um, there's a lot, it's a strong group of students. Um, they have a strong both technical and practical side to them, and they're always looking for new members. And we get a lot of students who come here just for to join um, RPI SEC. Also, I believe the um, first semester and I've, of I've RPI actually been SEC on trips to schools where so if you have like absolutely said, oh, no background knowledge you're the RPI and you join, SEC university. Uh, and you attend so if those you're interested in computer meetings, security, that's... take a look at that. So oh, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, I was going to do that and then I got lazy. So that's why I can't speak on behalf of it. <laughs> me too. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it, it I, IntroSec is a very popular self taught I can uh, go for this one. So the CS um, it's actually used major by does not, and government I do not well. believe it has it's a specific very, robotics, very impressive. Um, but the ECSE okay. major does. So let's That's see. the electric we computer have some systems major. How rigorous um, is and it there is a concentration of robotics. So if you'd like minors, that, I would recommend I think CS tends to be pretty flexible with most dual majors. I don't know about management specifically, but just the way the course is, once you get past a lot of your general requirements, you can sort of take your electives when it is convenient for you. I answer that. It's in parallel computing, yeah. I don't know about management specifically, but I would say it's probably not too difficult. Yeah, it, this is something that's strongly encouraged. Um, for students who are interested in, and there are very few barriers. Um, uh, so yeah, it's very, it's generally um, easy to do. What it gen it does though is it it restricts choose up your free electives because you're electing to do a dual major. And I think Casey's shaking his head because he basically his schedule is very. Um, I have a friend doing research right now this summer, and he's in the same year as I am. Okay, so what type of research opportunities are there for computer science and how early after freshman can you year. start? It will probably depend on how much experience you have and what languages you know too, and the what the research project is looking for. So I haven't done research personally, but I've heard it's a good idea to get through data structures also first, a really good just so you have that background. Lost internships or lost jobs. Because, um, you know, as all of this was going on and you didn't really know who would hire you, the RPI research programs and various professors were definitely there to support students. Uh, great answers. The the general rule of thumb is you just look for opportunities, ask professors, do well in their classes. But we have a lot of computer science students who join research projects outside of computer science, starting with their programming skills and their web skills. But usually they do well at that. And then the professors figure out that these students are good modelers, good problem solvers, and they get more directly involved in the, the direction of the research. In, um, CS. Um, I have friends who graduated see. who work in everything from web dev we on time? Uh, to a friend of mine working in uh, cybersecurity yeah, down in DC. Um, for there's, the also, there's a wide range of CS opportunities, and I think people at RPI what take advantage of all. What kind of research will be included? Is it all laboratory based? Um, I'm sorry, I don't feel. Um, okay, great. I appreciate that. Um, how do AP high school credits? Okay, so you Meg, you're taking care of that. All right. 
Um, can you explain the summer arch program? So we have three students in the arch right now. So how about if you talk about arch? Yeah. So summer arch is, you know, when I, I think class of 22 were the first group that's like everybody's doing it, you know? Um, and when I first toured school, um, uh, for at least me, and stuff, uh, I used, they, I worked for the state of California, um, you know, last about summer, it and, we're like, Here's and how I it is, literally and copied code kind of, from one of my know, CSM works not, to a project I was working on because it was the same thing. So for me, was, at least me, definitely. Yes. You know, we, we all had a lot of questions and over the two years that I've been at RPI, it's kind of been more clarified and I know what it is. And so now that I'm doing it, unfortunately not on campus, um, into the situation, but it's a good experience. I think it allows you to get some interesting classes. There's a lot of pop up classes that occur, some shorter term classes. For example, my writing course uh, is kind of a modified version of the normal writing courses at RPI. Um, so maybe if you want to dip your toes into a course or a different department, the arch is a good way to do that. Um, there are plenty of courses that are required for certain majors. There's lots of elective choices, um, but it is a 12 week, right? 12 weeks over the course of the summer. And correct. So it is a little condensed. It's a little tough. Um, but I think the tough aspect of it also comes from being online rather than being on campus, which would make a big difference. So hopefully for incoming freshmen this year, that will be an option. Uh, Casey and Kristen, do you want to talk about the arch as well? Charlotte, you're, you're a rising sophomore, right? Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead and Casey. I actually got an exemption from ARCH, so instead of taking my internship during the school year, I was supposed to take it this summer. Unfortunately, it was canceled due to COVID, but Kristen? I'm still not taking classes right now. Yes. Yes. So you'll be back in the, uh, you're going to follow a regular junior or regular fall spring. Okay. Um, so it's actually a separate uh, club. Introspect is all about, about introspectivity, and it's all like precisely. to help, so them all, the help people learn. CS one, the lectures are three to four hundred. The labs are about thirty <laughs> students each. So you spend about half the time in class time in the large lectures and half the time in the labs. Very similar for data structures, and as the courses go forwards, uh, some of them are large, some of them get smaller. But I do have one very important point about this. Computer science is big everywhere. And if you actually end up at a place where computer science is, or you're looking at places where computer science is small, I would be very careful about that because it's so big, you need, you really want a vibrant program. And if there's, if it feels small and intimate, um, I took it, it an AI just class already, just like um, my first semester. So. So it's, uh, it's not hard to find opportunities for AI. Anyway, and there are concentrations um, opportunities in AI for HWS AI. and Somebody want to I don't know, presumably that CS too. For engineering, there are I they didn't have to, it was barely a GPA check for engineering. So if you want to do a major in engineering, they're very open to it. Correct. I have one um, class I get to choose. The rest are all predetermined. Okay. Um, uh, okay. This is an important. Um, um, I think 
the I way think this that might RPI be a good last question. Does R- an did RPI help is, you get I mean, your we internship have co-op for it roles too, like and did you need center, to pursue et those by yourself? But also the networking aspect in general. Really so you're going to have good relationships with your peers and with your professors, your advisors, and they're all helping you simultaneously look for jobs because that's why they're there. So just throughout the course of being there, you're going to meet people. Um, so we obviously have the career fair as well. That's not how I tend to get jobs. I like to you know, meet people, introduce myself through you know, networking. Um, and so I think it's more just like the community as a whole that helps you. Um, rather than like RPI specifically having programs that outright help you, I would rather just go to my advisor and be like, help me. Um, and then it usually turns out. Others? <clears throat> 